In this video, I'm going to attempt to show how DNA makes a copy of itself. That is, how it replicates. So we'll start by drawing a double helix. So here's our, our double helix here. And then we'll have it split or unwind. And it's going to unwind because of an enzyme we've talked about before. This will be our enzyme. This is helicase that un unwinds and unzips the DNA. Now we've talked about how DNA strands have a direction associated with them. So let's say this is our five prime end and we follow this strand along then this would be the three prime end down here and then for the anti-parallel strand opposite it would be five prime on the left and three prime on the right okay if you don't know what that means go back and watch the video about direction of a dna strand so in the area, we have nucleotides, free nucleotides, which are going to come in and pair up with their complementary base pairs. So you remember, if there's an A, it's going to complementary base pair with a T, and C's and G's are going to base pair. And they get stitched together into new strands by an enzyme called polymerase. There's actually a couple different kinds of polymerase. <clears throat> and polymerase, as the name suggests, is an enzyme. You know it's an enzyme because it ends in A's, and it's an enzyme that makes polymers. So the problem with, not the problem, but the polymerase can only make new strands in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Okay, it only goes from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. And so you can see if both of these parent strands are going to base pair with nucleotides and make new daughter strands, you can see that it's a bit of a problem if polymerase only works in one direction. So I'll show you what I mean. So here we have this strand here. Um, if we have base pairs, we'll say each of these little lines is an A, A, T, C, or G. Okay, and they're coming along and they're binding, so maybe this is an A and this is a T on the parent strand. Okay, this is a C, this would be a G. So all these nucleotides come in, like so, and polymerase, this is the enzyme polymerase, it's going to stitch all these together. And so it's going to make a continuous strand, and this strand is going to be made in this direction, heading towards the fork in the DNA. So let's just write this down. This circle I've drawn is the enzyme polymerase, <clears throat> and this is specifically polymerase 3. This region, by the way, where the DNA is unzipping, this is called a replication fork. Pretty logical name, the fork in the DNA where it's replicating. <clears throat> okay, so this new strand, I'll just carry it along a little bit further here. This new strand being formed left to right on your screen here, it is going in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Right? We're making a new strand here, a daughter strand that's running anti parallel to the parent strand underneath it. So maybe you should just pause the video for a second and make sure you can understand uh, what, we've, what we've been talking about so far. All right, and this is fine because DNA polymerase works in the five prime to three prime direction. But now let's look to the other side. Oh, by the way, this new strand that's forming here, this is called the leading strand. 
It's uh, a continuous strand. Just as long as the helicase keeps moving along in this direction and unzipping the DNA, this leading strand will continuously be formed. Let's say continuous. Okay. But on the other side, where we have nucleotides move in and base pair, Well, this would be, let's draw a few here. This would be the three prime end of the new strand, right? This would be the, let's say this is the five prime end here. So the polymerase can only work in this direction. 5 prime to 3 prime. Going away in the are in the opposite direction that the DNA is unzipping. It's kind of like back stitching and sewing. We're making these short segments and we're making them in the opposite direction to the overall direction of replication. Okay, so in other words, the overall direction of DNA replication is left to right here because as the helicase moves along left to right but on this strand these segments are being made right to left these are short segments these short segments are called Okazaki fragments named after the scientists that discovered them Now there's a couple of other enzymes involved here that we'll need to we'll need to go over. So again, this is um, this is DNA polymerase three. So I'll just draw a line down to this. I've already written it out here. This is polymerase three again, but this time it's working in the right to left direction. Now how does it know where to start? It starts at a something called a primer. It's going to draw it in here. This drawing is going to get a little bit messy here. <laughs> so this is a primer. Okay. And uh, I'll just make a note over here on the side. The primer is added by yet another enzyme. This enzyme is called RNA primase. Okay, so this primer is laid down here by the RNA primase, and that signals the start place for the polymerase 3 to start stitching these nucleotides together, making an Okazaki fragment. So here's an Okazaki fragment, here's another Okazaki fragment. So I suppose that we should draw a primer in here too. There would have been one at the beginning of this Okazaki fragment. Eventually these primers have to be removed. So what removes the primers? Another enzyme. So I'm going to draw it right around the primer here. Primer removed by, now we've already indicated DNA polymerase 3. This is DNA polymerase 1. Okay, so these primers are removed by DNA polymerase 1. And now you've got these short segments, these Okazaki fragments. The primers are removed. They're going to have to be attached to one another. And they're attached by another enzyme. <laughs> and uh, as I'm running out of space, I'm just going to try to fit this in on the bottom here. Uh, fragments 
attached by ligase. It uh, seals up these fragments, and attaches them. So we uh, okay, and this is <clears throat> so this strand, this strand on this side. If this was the leading strand down here. This strand is called the lagging strand. Not quite sure where I'm going to write that. You might want to be a little neater than I am here. This is the lagging strand. Okay, so a quick recap on this whole thing. The DNA double helix is unwound and unzipped by the enzyme helicase. Okay, so we have two parent strands. <clears throat> um, the nucleotides are going to come and base pair with the parent strand and make a daughter strand. The DNA polymerase 3, this enzyme right here, works in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So on the leading strand, it is continuously forming in the same direction that the replication is occurring. In other words, the, the synthesis of DNA here is occurring in the same direction as the replication fork is moving along. On the opposite strand, where the daughter strand is, um, say, flipped around, <clears throat> because the DNA polymerase 3 only works in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, it's working backwards. When I say backwards, I mean in the opposite direction that the replication fork is moving along. This is the backstitching analogy. We keep getting, imagine this moving along and we keep getting these little segments going backwards. Uh, the DNA polymerase 3 needs to know where to start making these fragments called Okazaki fragments. It knows where to start because of the presence of, an, of a primer. The primer is laid down by an enzyme called RNA primase. Eventually, these primers are going to be removed by another enzyme called DNA polymerase 1. And finally, these fragments are going to be sealed together by another enzyme called ligase. <clears throat>